Welcome back, everybody. It's Thursday, January 11th, 2024. I'm born on this date in 1930. Lula Mae Hardaway of Eufaula, songwriter and mother of Stevie Wonder. She co-wrote Signed, Sealed, Delivered, and several other hits. Now, we have the latest step toward a new method of capital punishment, another unionization effort, and something about a ball coach. My name's Ike Morgan, and we are down in Alabama. Well, undoubtedly, you've already heard plenty said about Nick Saban over the past day. News of his retirement puts a period, we'll make that an exclamation point, on a 28-year head coaching career during which Saban won 292 games, 19 bowls, 12 conference titles, 11 of them in the SEC, and 7 national championships. Now, those 7 national titles are more than anyone else has. Six of them came at Alabama, matching Bear Bryant's total. Now, in our state, this is as big a cultural story as it is a sports story. Yesterday, you had Alabama fans laying flowers and oatmeal cream pies at the foot of Saban statue in Tuscaloosa, Auburn fans rolling the oaks at Toomer's Corner in celebration, and veteran weatherman James Spann answering some folks' concerns on social media by assuring us he wasn't nearing retirement himself. So what's next? Well, they expect the most insanely frenzied coaching search we've seen in a while in a sport where all coaching searches are insanely frenzied. Names were immediately batted around for Saban's replacement. Oregon's Dan Lanning, Ole Miss's Lane Kiffin, Florida State's Mike Norvell, Texas's Steve Sarkeesian. Now, that's all just educated speculation. But don't expect the search and hire to take too long, especially in this era of transfer portals. We already saw Sarah Land's five-star receiver Ryan Williams decommit from Alabama almost immediately after the Saban news broke. So, if you're a Tide fan, grab hold of something and hang on. A federal judge denied a condemned Alabama man's request for an injunction to stop his execution by nitrogen hypoxia, reports AL.com's Ivana Rinkew. Now, some of the claims in Kenneth Eugene Smith's lawsuit may move forward in the courts, but he's still scheduled to die during the window beginning at 2 a.m. January 25th and ending at 6 a.m. January 26th. U.S. District Judge Austin Huffaker Jr., quote, There is simply not enough evidence to find with any degree of certainty or likelihood that execution by nitrogen hypoxia under the protocol is substantially likely to cause Smith super added pain, end quote. Now, Smith's execution, if it were to take place, would be the first using the nitrogen method. Smith was convicted twice in the 1988 murder for hire of Elizabeth Dorlene Senate in Colbert County. The United Auto Workers of America will be making a play in Alabama in its effort to bring non-union U.S. plants into the fold, reports AL.com's William Thornton. The UAW says that at the Mercedes-Benz plant in Vance, that's in Tuscaloosa County, around 1,500 workers, or about 30% of the workforce there, has signed union authorization cards. The union's efforts at the Vance plant have previously not gotten very far, but the UAW considers this a big milestone and has a goal of reaching 70% buy-in before it calls on the company to recognize the union. Well, thank you all so much for listening. I'll be out for a couple of days, but y'all will be well taken care of. In the meantime, as always, come on by and see what we're up to on the internet at AL.com.